This week, space agencies around the world will have a historic opportunity to watch a comet make its first visit to the inner solar system. It will also be the closest look we've ever gotten at one of these brand new comets. On October 19th, comet C2013A1, also known by the classy sounding nickname of Sighting Spring, will pass within about 140,000 kilometers of Mars. That's just one third of the distance between us and the moon, and less than a tenth as far as the closest known comet flyby of Earth. Conveniently enough, we have a ton of spacecraft on and around Mars that are going to be right there when Sighting Spring passes, ready to make the most of it. But first, we have to make sure they all survive the encounter. Astronomer Robert McNaught discovered Comet C2013A1 at Siding Spring Observatory in Australia on January 3, 2013, hence the name. Judging by its trajectory, the comet hails from the distant reaches of the Oort Cloud, a remote region surrounding our solar system that's about 100,000 times farther from us than the Sun. Hurtling toward our neighborhood at 56 kilometers per second, Siding Spring has taken at least a million years to make it this far. And for a while, it looked like its journey might be coming to an abrupt, and messy end. At first, astronomers thought that Siding Spring was going to make a direct impact with Mars, a planet that we're heavily invested in. But in recent months, they've determined that the comet will miss the planet, but just barely. Specifically, the comet's nucleus, a small chunk of rock and ice between about one and eight kilometers wide, will likely pass Mars right by. But that may not be the case for the coma, the tail of gas and dust that the comet gives off as it approaches the sun. But it's just dust right? Well, even a single particle a few millimeters wide can damage a spacecraft if it's traveling at 56 kilometers a second. To give you a sense of how fast that is, the speed of sound at Earth's sea level is about a third of a kilometer per second. Plus, Siding Springs coma is enormous, 160,000 kilometers wide and 480,000 kilometers long. So even though we have a pretty good sense of where the comet's nucleus is going to go, the coma is much less predictable. As Canadian astronomer David Levy once said, comets are like cats. They have tails and they do precisely what they want. Which is adorable, but still, we have a lot of really important stuff flying around Mars right now that we'd very much like to not be destroyed by some sassy comet swinging its tail. Like ESA's Mars Express, for example, and NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and the Mars Odyssey all in orbit right around the red planet. Then there's India's Mars Orbiter mission and NASA's MAVEN, both of which just arrived in orbit a few weeks ago. Not to mention NASA's two remaining rovers that are still active on the ground, Curiosity and Opportunity. Fortunately, astronomers think Mars's atmosphere, though much thinner than Earth's, is still thick enough to slow and burn up any dust particles, which will help protect the rovers. But to protect the orbiters, space agencies are sending them behind Mars while the coma is expected to be closest, about 90 minutes after the nucleus passes. So, once everyone has put their hardware out of harm's way, they can think about how best to use that hardware and make the most of this historic encounter. After all, according to NASA, we may never again be this close to a comet fresh from the Oort cloud. Comets carve enormous elliptical orbits through the solar system and essentially start to melt as they approach the sun. After 100 orbits or so, many comets eventually disintegrate. But new comets keep showing up, and astronomers think they originate in the Oort cloud, a sort of fluffy, icy nimbus of material left over from when the solar system first formed. And since this seems to be the Siding Spring's first time out of the cloud, that means it's never been exposed to the sun's heat and radiation. So the chance to observe something that's never been close to the sun is a chance to study an object that has stayed pretty much unchanged since the birth of the solar system some 4.6 billion years ago. If we happen to find important life-giving materials on or around Siding Spring, like water and carbon compounds, that would mean that these things were present early in our solar system's history. So dozens of instruments in the Metro Mars area will be trained on the comet looking for these materials and compiling data about the overall makeup of this amazing celestial relic. What could be more in your face than that? Well, don't forget, the Rosetta spacecraft is going to send a lander to the surface of its target comet in just a couple of weeks. So if you want to make sure you get the latest from these events and all kinds of goings on around the universe, check out subbable.com slash scishow to learn how you can help support us. And don't forget to go to youtube.com slash scishowspace and subscribe.